So I tested out most of the latest updated features in Resolve 18.5 beta, and here are my top six favorite new features. So let's start with good but not great features and a quick disclaimer, you might disagree with me. For the first time in Resolve, you can right click on your clip, go down here and click on transcribe audio. It goes ahead and transcribe everything that's being said in the clip. And that's pretty impressive because if I play it through, so we're shooting a super quick test. What I'm gonna do is once I can actually go and select this and you can see what's happening on my viewer in here. Like, see, it's actually creating an in and an out point. And then at that point, what I can do is like, let's move over here and I can just click, hey, insert clip here, or I can do an append. So if I do insert, like you'll see with the audio and video, it just dropped this section only. So let's play it through. Including a super quick test. So that's pretty impressive, right? Another thing that you can do is like, I can make a selection here and then I can just go click right here and look what it did. It created a marker with duration. So super, super helpful. And then I can just click on that marker, give it a name, right? And one more thing that it allows you to do is that same thing. Like if I were to grab just this section, I can click right here and turn it into a sub clip. I don't work like that, so it's not useful for me. Now, it's impressively accurate, but it does lack some features and it just feels rigid when using it and you'll know what I mean. Now, I'm gonna go to this software called Descript and I'm gonna bring the same clip in, okay? So let's start a new project and here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna find the same clip and all I'm gonna do is drag and drop and just look what it does, okay? So it's analyzing this clip, it asked me for a speaker's name i'm gonna put that in and i'm gonna select the language which is english now we have our whole script here and it brings it in as a timeline too underneath you can see so you have your waveform you got your words that you can click on and you can literally just use it as an editing timeline so what i can do here is like all this i know was just a bad take so i don't want to use i can just go and delete it see that is something that you cannot do here i cannot select this and hit delete because it's working off of my source file. And if I were to bring this clip here, it doesn't give me the same options, right? So that's what I mean. It, it feels like a read only than like this, like where I can do so much more. So let's, for the heck of it, like let's do something else. So what I can do is, hey, let's take this part where I say, and I'm gonna use the, their super scale feature and see how it stacks out. So I can select this area and I can cut it. And now let's just paste it here and just see what happens, right? So now let's play it through. So shooting a super quick test and I'm gonna use their super scale feature and see how it stacks up. Like a so now there's super and super in two areas. So I can just click on this super, delete it. And now let's play it again and see how it sounds. So shooting a quick test and I'm gonna use their super scale. Look how interesting this is, right? Like, and how much more powerful this type of editing is once again, Kudos for them to including this, but we're still so far away from like what this is giving us, right? Another thing that you can do here is I can go under edit and say, remove filler words. And look at this, it's gonna go through and it's going to take out all of these, ums, ahs, and it already found one. What stacks up, like if it's any good. So it found like this like that it can take out. So if I hit apply, boom, that like is gone. Now you see what I'm talking about, right? Like, I mean, how interactive this experience was as opposed to what we see in Resolve. So now you can select your clip in the timeline, go under timeline and just say, create subtitles from audio. So let's make it 60. So it's a little bit, uh, it's a bit more legible and let's do create. And it does a really good job. Like everything is, see like even 1080p, how it's uh, writing it out. Like it, it, it's doing a really good job. Now I can go and choose my font and I can further customize it to however I like. Now I used to pay so much money to get captions done because at the time YouTube auto captions were kind of whack, but this is going to be saving me some serious cash. It's good, but it's still very traditional sort of like subtitles compared to something like this. I can go under, I can click right here and go under captions. And then here I can select a template. So let's say I like this one, right? So now if I, let's just uh, zoom out in our timeline a little bit. And now if I go here and play it through, just check it out. And I'm gonna use their super scale feature and see 
how it stacks up, like if it's any good. What I'm gonna do is... And there's so many different options that you have here. I just selected one. So this is good, not great. I wanted to give you a taste of something better and uh, what resolve can be in the future. Now here comes a massive time saver, especially if you're doing node-based color management. So here's an example where I'm converting my DaVinci white gamut into an HSV color space and doing some jiggery pokery to my image as you can see how the colors are shifting. And then I'm coming right back out from HSV color space to DaVinci white gamut. In the past, if you were to do that, Basically, you are going to have to drop color space transform and then manually pull, put in the info, right? So I would go HSV here and I'll go DaVinci Intermediate here and then DaVinci Wide Gamut here and then DaVinci Intermediate here. And that does the proper conversion. Or I could hold the option key and drag and drop this and bring this up. And then I have to manually go here and select HSV and swing this to DaVinci Wide Gamut and do that. Well, that all just changed, okay? So now if I drag and drop this on here, I can just click on swap and done. Topaz AI killer right here. And it breaks my heart because I just bought Topaz AI, but this thing is dangerously good. So under metadata, you can see it's a 1080p clip in a 4K timeline. So if I were to go over here and you look at my timeline, it says right here. So that's a 4K timeline and I have a 1080p clip and it looks okay, right? So like if I play it through and you look at it, let's just uh, kill the audio. So you can see that it looks okay. There's nothing wrong with it, but in our inspector, we have an option called super scale and it's already set to 2X, which is gonna make it 4K. So if I just click here and turn this on, focus on the eyes, okay? Just focus right here on the eyes and the hair. And I'm gonna punch in in post so you guys can see it. So this is before, this is after. Focus on the eyes and the hair, before and after. So what I did is I already went ahead and just basically re-rendered this version that is 4K and upscaled. So this is before eyes, look at the eyes, and this is after. I mean, look at this difference. Like this is kind of mind blowing. So this is before, this is after. And more importantly, what I wanna show you is this. If you look at the scopes right here, let me kill the upscaled version and just look at like how there's so much noise in our image. So it's doing two things. It's sharpening the image using AI, and then it's reducing the noise, and it's doing a fantastic job at both. This is a straight slam dunk for me, but before we move on to the next feature, it will be a sin if I don't tell you about my one hour free webinar that will turn you into a grading machine. Most importantly, it includes tons of LUTs and power grades. So make sure to sign up. Link is in the description. Let's get back to the video. Second to the last feature, and I'm obviously saving the best for last. So before, if we wanted to create a bleach bypass effect on this shot, what we would do is I would create a node right here, and then I will create a layer node. I would go right here, right click, and change the composite mode to overlay. And then I would click right here um, or right here. And then I'll go under saturation and I'll kill it to um, this, like zero. Kill the saturation and now we have a bleach bypass effect and it looks pretty good, okay? So that's what I would do before. Now, if I create a new version and kill these three, so let's just kill all of that. I go right here and now I can do a composite mode node based. So I can just right click here, go under composite mode. I can change it to overlay and I can kill the saturation. And now if we go back and forth between the two clips, so one where the bleach bypass was created this way, and then this is just a single node, it's a much more efficient way and it keeps your node tree looking clean. All right, it hurts my heart to say this because this feature is going to destroy so many companies because those companies specialize in this specific area. So it used to cost like 500 to do a remote session or cheaper companies would offer like a thousand dollar monthly plan to do the same, unlimited sessions, blah, 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 right? Or you can only do eight bit or 10 bit or something like that. So now you can send a clean feed anywhere in the world natively from Resolve. So say I'm grading a project for a client and my client is going to be reviewing it on his MacBook Pro. To initiate, all you gotta do is go under workspace and click on remote monitoring, okay? 
and this little guy will pop open and also you'll get like a little link right here. I've gone through and tried out a bunch of different settings. So the best settings here for video Kodak is the last one, 420 10-bit. And then for the bitrate, I would just leave it to 10. And then all you got to do is just click on start session and it gives you this key. So you got to copy this key and then send it through email, whatever have you to your client. On the client end, he will open DaVinci Remote Monitor and paste the key and done. The colors look flawless. The quality is excellent. There is a tiny lag, but let's not forget, this is still a beta. So I'm assuming by full release, they will fix all these small issues. So what do you think? Do you agree with my picks? Is there anything that is noteworthy that I miss? Drop it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so you can be notified about my future content. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.